All right, uh, we have all the files uh, in your student number now, uh, the ones that you did not create. In the, um, so now we're all ready to move on. If we take a look, I'd like you to make sure and have this packet, your print packet, in front of you because it's very important to help us take a look at where the parts, first of all, what the number is of the part because uh, you might have labeled things like part one, which is the column. Uh, and also where all these things fit together. So this thing kind of, uh, you know, this column fits into the base and these, this thing goes down in here and spins. The gear goes inside of here. The rack comes into the column. The cover plate holds the rack in place. So um, just kind of looking at where you created screw holes and things like that and how all this stuff fits together. Because you always want to kind of work inside out. So I can't put the cover plate on until I put the gear inside of the counter bore. So just things like common sense. If you were going to put this thing together, uh, whenever you do an assembly and inventor, you want to do it the same way, you know, that you would that way. So let's go ahead and, and get after it here. As soon as I get this thing off to the side. All right. So uh, you're going to go ahead and create a new assembly. So that's the one we're going to go to. And if that home screen wasn't up, uh, remember that uh, the inventor new command has some different uh, different looks, just standard that I am, okay? So, all right, we got the a new, a new assembly file uh, created. The first component you always wanna put in is what we call the grounded components, the component that doesn't move. It's like the part that is the base or would sit on the table or, or however you wanna look at it. So we come right over here to the top of this, we left click, place component. That is going to be called part two, the base. Well, makes sense. So uh, part two, the base, I'm gonna click open. Now when this comes in, it kind of comes in, uh, it's cool looking, but it doesn't really give me a view of what I really want. So I, I'm gonna just kind of drag the whole thing over until I get that home button, and then I'm just gonna left click. And then you'll notice I'll drag it back and, and use my scroll wheel to kind of get it a little smaller. Uh, now I can kind of see this thing a little bit better. Now, before you left click, before you left click, I'm gonna show you something, you can right click which gives you more components, which is kind of a, kind of a nice thing. I like to always put my first part grounded at the origin. It makes, sometimes it makes assembling things easier. So I'm going to go ahead. I, I right clicked and then I'll left click place grounded at origin. And that just puts that in there. Now you'll notice it wants me to put more of these in. I don't need to, so I could just right click and, uh, and just cancel. So once I get one put in there. Now you'll notice that it has a little pin next to it in the uh, in the model tree, and that tells me that it's grounded, meaning I cannot move this part, which is good. That's what I want. So that way I can put all the parts around it. All right, so base is in. Let's go ahead and hit place again. This time let's go to uh, we're going to put in uh, the column, part one, the column. Open. And if you look at this, if you look at the blueprint, you're going to notice that this thing, I drew this thing. Yours might be different than mine, but mine's, mine's drawn this way, which is kind of opposite. A real easy thing that I can do right now is right click and I can rotate. See the Y axis right here? I can rotate this part at 90 degrees. I can right click and rotate it again at 90 degrees on the Y axis. And now this thing's going to, that's the way it's supposed to go. So I'm just gonna kinda go off to the side, left click to place it. Again, it wants me to make another one. I can also, I can right click here and I can hit escape or escape on the keyboard right here. That'll cancel that. So now uh, I like to try to bring just, you know, I just bring the parts in and then I assemble them. I don't, I'm not a person that brings like all 15 parts in at once and have them all in my way. I'm, I'm gonna put one in at a time, assemble it how it's supposed to go, and move on to the next part. So let's talk about assembling. Right now, if I left click, I can drag this thing everywhere I want. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to constrain it. Two options. This is like a movable type of thing. Constrain is what I use for the most, most, most of the time just to make it so it goes in one location. So uh, I'm going to go constraint and I have a lot of different types here. I'm going to go over some of them. Uh, I have different, different things up here, but just a typical assembly constraint. But uh, I like a really powerful tools. If you have any kind of holes at all, um, and this part has a lot of them, uh, insert is a very cool command. So I'm going to show you that one right away. When we did our puzzle cubes, we just basically did a lot of mates um, with solutions of mating and flushing things. But I'm going to show you these other ones. Insert. I'm going to come over and I'm going to scroll in. 
and you can see how it pops up holes. I want it to pop up the face of this hole and the axis of this. So I left click one, then I come over here and click off to the side to rotate this, and that's the hole that this thing's supposed to go into. So then I'm gonna go ahead and, again, I want this hole, not this inside one. See how it can show me different ones? I want this one, left click. And now if I click home, you'll see, uh, oh, I messed that up. That's not even where it's supposed to go, right? That's too far down. So, actually I did that on purpose because that happens. Cancel, just starts you back over. So, why don't we try that again? What was it? It was constrain. It was insert. It was this hole here. Flip it around. I'm going to flip it around again because this is the hole that I want. You can left click and move that a little bit. This is the one I want right here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click that one. Back to the home. Ah, that looks far, far better. Everything's all nice and lined up. Hit apply to go ahead and put that constraint in there. And what that does is and make it so now we can just add another constraint. I'm just gonna X out of this right now so I can show you a couple things. Because right now, with this thing click, if I click on this and move my mouse around, you'll see that I can still move it this way. It just spins on on that axis. That's okay, but <laughs> this is not gonna be a very sturdy ar arbor press if I leave it like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda just bend it off to the side a little bit just so you, you get an idea of what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna go back to constraint. And this time, instead of using insert, I'm going to use this second one over, which is an angle. And now I can tell it to be at, you know, like a certain angle. So in this case, let's just say that the side of this and the side of the, I don't want this other side. I want like two sides that, that could, I could put like a square on if I was like building it. Let's say that I want that. Uh, solutions are different things. If you have more than more than um, two pieces, like in here, we could use these. That has three pieces, but I only have two, so I can click here. And if I keep this at zero degrees, that'll put that perfectly uh, perpendicular to both pieces. That's what I want. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to X out of this again. And now if I left click, drag around, this thing doesn't move anymore. That means it's fully constrained, and I'm ready to move on to some other parts. So I showed you insert, and I showed you angle. Um, which are which are great tools, great parts. Um, from here, we can look at the print, and you can kind of decide what you want to you want to work on next. You know, um, for me, I think uh, I think I feel like just kind of putting this little piece on the back right here. You'll see it's got a couple holes, and it just this rouse. See, uh, part number ten is the punch holder, and it just kind of holds right on the back. So let's go ahead and put that on there real quick. I uh, better not x that out. Part ten. So we go to place. We find part 10, which is the punch holder. We hit open. And again, it's going in the correct way. So if I want to, uh, I can just go ahead and just left click. And that just places it right there. Escape on the keyboard uh, will cancel the command. Lots of different ways to do stuff. And we're going to go ahead and line these holes up and put these things in where it needs to go. What constraint do you think will be the best one? Yep. Yep. You got it. Insert. So we're going to go here and we want this hole. I'll flip this thing around because it's like kind of like, hey, where am I going to put the glue at on this thing? I'm going to put it right in here. I don't want to put it on the other side of it. It'll flip it all around. So I want to put that there. Whoa, where'd we go? Let's check it out. Lined it up, didn't it? Perfect. Hit apply. X out. And as you know, or as you can figure out already, this thing... Is moving still now if you made these exactly where everything lines up according to the blueprint and assuming the blueprint isn't correct you could hit another insert you could put another insert between this hole and the one on the back side or you could go ahead and do a 90 degree uh, mate as well either one uh, would would be fine I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and go with that that insert constraint again just show you what that looks like And again, if it does not preview, meaning it doesn't flip to where it's supposed to be, um, sometimes you can click this other, um, these other buttons. And if it doesn't work, then that means something's wrong with your design, meaning 
your holes aren't going to line up. That means you got to go back and fix something. So if that happens to you, that's the deal. I'm going to click apply, X out, and now this thing doesn't move anymore because it's kind of like putting two bolts in that hole and, uh, and life is good. So you can imagine, um, honestly, with those two different components, you, you can pretty much do anything you want at that point. Um, once I've showed you those things. So I'm going to put one more part in and then I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm going to go ahead and put part number five. Uh, that's a part you did not create, part I created. So we'll go place. We'll go find that. That was one I took off the public. Five. That's five one is what mine's called. That's fine. Open. So again, this thing's coming in a little funky. If I look at the design, um, it looks like the, the chamfered side is supposed to be pointing up and the, and the gears go, go towards the column. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to need to rotate, uh, rotate this thing a little bit. I'm going to need to rotate. Uh, it looks like to me, I want to flip the X up. So we're going to go rotate the X up. Oh, I messed that up. Didn't I right click again? We'll rotate the Z at 90. How am I doing? Pretty sweet, huh? So if you're like me and you're uh, uh, challenged here with the direction of things, <laughs> rotate the Y. That works. It's upside down now, um, but it's going. It kind of needs to just be rotated around the axis here. So let's rotate the X. Rotate the X one more time. Now we're now we're where we need to be. So if you got to, just play around with that a little bit until you get it so the, the gears are coming in. So let's place it. Let's right click and hit escape. And now we have this guy. I can click and move it around and that's the way it's supposed to go in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and place lots of different, different ways we can do this, but I'm gonna show you just one other way with the constraint tool. It's just a typical mate. We're just gonna make it like a, a square face. Flip that thing around. Mate that inside of here. And you can see uh, that, that that mates that, that surface. Okay. I can hit apply, which is cool. Um, and now cancel. And now I can click and this thing will slide up and down, but it's still going all over this way. So let's go ahead and, and put ourselves a constraint on the side of this thing with the inside of this thing. And now you can see that's fit it fits in there a lot better. Apply. And now there'll just be one more because now it can go up and down still, which honestly, if this was being worked, you know, uh, this is how that thing's supposed to be. So I'm not going to constrain that last one because if I'm moving this through the gear, I want to be able to move that. So we'll just leave that last constraint off there. Um, for now, later on, we might put it on, but for now we're good. So hopefully that gives you enough uh, tools within the constraint uh, relationships to be able to start putting all your parts together. It might take you a little bit of time, but just think about uh, how all those things go together and uh using the insert and angles and and things like that and and uh and good luck if you need to edit anything which happens remember over here is where we fix things all your constraints that you you put uh on the base right here if you plus that you'll see there's two constraints on there if you need to you can right click and you can delete them don't don't if it's right but if you if you need to you can um, that's where all of these things are that you've done. So if, if things aren't working, sometimes I have to go through and I have to right click and delete those or edit those uh, constraints to make everything work. But, uh, for the most part, life's pretty good and it's, uh, it just takes a little bit of time to put all that thing, to, all those things together. So, uh, good luck with the assembly. Um, let me know if you have questions. Good job.